Hi, this is Paul from Model Build International with another review from Flyhawk. This one is of their Panzer II Aus L Lux or Lynx. Uh, this one with the add on armor, so the late war version. Um, this was the last version of the Panzer II that was made and it was very different from the, uh, from the versions that started the war. Uh, this one was uh, up armored, um, interleaved wheels, new tracks. Uh, which were developed for the semi-experimental uh, Aus G, a new more powerful engine, more fuel, longer range, faster, uh, crew of four, um, so overall a much better vehicle. Um, when it uh, went into combat, um, they basically up updated some bits on it as well, and that's where the, uh, the add-on armor came in. Many Lukes were equipped with additional frontal armor, and also a bracket for spare parts and ammo box were also added. And currently it looks as though most of the updated looks like this one belong to the 4th Panzer Division and uh, see in action until early 1945. And I've managed to dig out a few photographs of um, this particular type of looks with the add-on armor. And the kit in the box it looks very similar to what you're seeing in these images. So let's have a look at the box and see what we get inside. So let's have a look inside the box and see what we get. So nice coup on the box. It is a pretty sturdy box actually. Um, usual QR codes on the side. I think usually this one takes you to Flyhawk's website. These two go to online stores. Um, on the ends the usual stuff, some uh, brief bit of information about the vehicle on the end here in three languages. There's nothing on the bottom, so let's open it up. So inside we have two pages of glossy in color instructions, and uh, let's look here, one, two, three, four, five bags. Nothing's going to move around much in there. This one's a type of bag is different to the other ones. There's three pieces in here, but they're, they're held pretty tight and they're not going to chafe against one another. Two bags with tracks. And backing card backing sheet with P, fret and zoom decals on there. Right, I'll open the bags and be back in a second. Okay, so now everything's out of the bags. So, the instructions, go through these quickly. Uh, looks like there's six different options for, uh, for painting options. Um, the instructions, obviously they're pretty small, but the printing is quite fine, so you can see the details of what's going on. Handy little um, smaller images giving you more details of exactly how things uh, line up and how things go together there. Uh, Rover, more well, the same photo etch, little side details showing you how the smaller parts fit together or go together to, before they go on to the bigger pieces. Really like the colour scheme at the bottom here so you can see exactly what goes where on the mudguards. And the same the colour scheme for the running gear as well. Tracks are uh, link and length. Um, and down. Um, yeah, more photo etch. Quite a lot of photo etch for such a small kit. Uh, with photo etch choices as well, I believe. And then make the turret on the back here. Come on, guys. And the paints are called out in Mr. Hobby Tamiya. So from there, you should be able to work out uh, which colours to use in your. Uh, your preferred paint range and decals. So let's look at some other parts. There's the, the main hole seems to be ah no, I thought so. Comes in two pieces, but they're actually pretty snugly fit together already, so you could probably just apply glue to those and you'd have been fine. Detail on the bottom of the hole. Some nice detail on the on the side there. Seems to be most of the top of the hole there. Most of the turret. In one please. It's 
more of the hole there. Oops. Photo etch. That looks nice if I can get the light right. That looks good. Some small pieces there, add more detail. And this is, I think that's actually, yeah, that's two frets. Obviously two frets moulded together, it just makes it easier, less things to move around inside the box. Some nice detail on some of these pieces. Most of the running gear, again, frets K and L. Incidentally, I think it's this fret here, J, that's the new fret that you didn't get in the original boxing of the Panzer II L. This one is basically adds on the, as it says, the add-on hour. These are, that's all these pieces on here. Three frets joined together on that one. So I like that. Some really fine detail on those. And two sprues of Lincoln length tracks. So, looks like some nice detail there. A fair bit of photo etch for such a small kit. Instructions are like the colour coding on them. Um, the box is good for keeping everything together. Everything should arrive safely. So, next let's have a look uh, a closer look at the instructions and the parts. Okay, so let's have a look at the first page of the instructions. Start off at the top with the uh, layout of the sprues. That's pretty small, you couldn't work out the numbering of the sprues from this, but it's enough to show you which bits should be on which sprues. And also to show you that you've got um, an extra sprue J in this version of the kit as against the previous um, Panzer II else. Else L's from Flyhog. And then coming down the usual icons, and then it shows you the, um, should we say, the six options for finishing your kit. One is in winter camouflage, the other five I would just like uh, camouflage. Then down to the first bit of the instructions, um, basically putting the, the main part of the hull together. Um, I like the nice, di nice small exploded diagrams to show you some specific details of fitting. Um, the uh, the main parts have little sprues attached to them to keep them in shape in the box and in transit. All the ejector pins are hidden out the way and the sprue attachments are pretty small so that's good. On page two we start at the top with adding some of the suspension um, making some P parts. There's nice little diagrams on the side to show exactly how to fold them and where they fit onto a sub-assembly before you fit the main assembly onto the hull. Um, continuing down this bottom, the middle diagram is also step two, basically adding some of the extra bolt-on armour and suspension on the other side. Step three is adding the um, the, wheel, the running gear, the wheels. Um, but I noticed on step one it actually said suggest to install the road wheels and track firstly and then install A1 which is the top part of the hull. So it seems a little strange there but at least the note is in step one so you will notice that they recommend to basically jump forward to step three, install the, uh, the wheels and the tracks, then come back to step one and continue on. Um, I really like the the little colour diagrams they have in here just to make sure that uh, you get everything in the right place and that's both the wheels and the various parts that go onto the, uh, onto the mud guards. And then we're going to the third page, step four at the top, which starts off with uh, playing with some photo etch making some uh, basically boxes to hold looks like jerry cans and aerial, a couple of grills that need to be formed to the right right profile. Then moving on to the link and length tracks, which look as though they should be okay. They're nicely detailed um, and they, I've played with a couple of them and they, they do actually uh, go together pretty well. Um, so they should work well, especially if 
if I'm kind of thinking of following the instructions and uh, doing the running gear on the tracks first before the top of the hull goes on. It would make life an awful lot easier. Um, and then step four continues down with putting the tracks and the basically jerry cans onto the hull. And then step five on the right hand side of the page, um, basically we're making the turret. Um, and again starting off with some bits of photo etch, it shows you exactly how to fold them to get the right shape. And then putting together the the turret in one piece, and right at the bottom of that page, page six, you put the turret on the hull, and the kit is built. And the last page is all about painting decals. Start off at the top, um, basically some how to use decals instructions in English, Chinese, and Japanese, I think. Uh, then down to the colours, they're named uh, in Chinese, Japanese, and also Mr. Hobby and. Tamiya um, references, so from those you should be able to translate that into your preferred uh, brand. And then coming down, there's decal placement and painting guides for the uh, six different options one in winter whitewash, uh, six in camouflage, um, and also separate painting guides for tools and some part views as well. So, uh, plenty there to keep you occupied, especially painting the camouflage in one seventy second. So, in conclusion, um, the earlier Panzer II Al Luke's kits from Flyhawk were very nice. This one's very nice as well. You get an extra sprue with the um, bolt-on armour and a couple of extra pieces as well. You get um, a PE fret to add more detail. And these kits are already pretty nicely detailed, even without the PE. The, um, the these sprue attachment points are pretty fine. The ejector pins are hidden out of the way where you won't see them. Um, so yeah, it's very nice. Uh, these six um, painting options. Um, the whitewash one is probably the simpler of the lot. Uh, the instructions are very nice. They're color co color um, called out where needed to make life a bit easier for you. A little hint about um, it might be easier to fit the wheels and the tracks before you put the top half of the hull. Um, looks like an interesting way to do it. I might do that one. Um, so of all, it's uh, yeah, it's a very nice kit and well worth a build. And many thanks to Flyhawk for the review sample.